Let's look at a way too early depth chart. If you had to guess now, this is way, way early, just with the information that we know now. Who do you think, um, what do you think our quarterback depth chart will look like next year? All right. I think Eric King's QB1. Uh, my gut instinct is telling me that Jaron Williams won't be here. I think that's going to be somebody that hits the transfer portal. Um, and I only say this, and I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm very, no matter what happens with these kids, especially the quarterbacks, I wish them nothing but the best of luck. Want them to land on their feet, get in a system that like shines with their skill set. You know, for some of these guys, some of these kids, they have had three coordinators in three years. That's not easy for all people at home. That's tough. You know, that's learning to basically Nikosi Perry. This is his third system since he's been here. Um, so, you know, I, I just, but I, I, I think Jaron Williams necessarily will hit the portal because he's flirted with it in the past. I know he had some SEC offers in the past and maybe he finds a school that he could call home. Maybe that right. You know, he was, he was committed to Kentucky, you know, in his career, maybe he ends up there. Who knows? So I don't think he's going to be here. Nikosi Perry, you could flip a coin. You know, he might just be, if he stays, I would say he would be the backup. Uh, and if he's the backup, you know, you're only one injury away from him to be inserted. Now, recently on the Orange Bowl Boys podcast, I said, well, if nobody came in and we didn't have Derek King coming in, who do you think starts? I think, I think Nikosi Perry, this system's tailor made for him. Actually, I do. I mean, he broke records, I know, Cala Vanguard. And, and, and to me, watching that system in this system, it's a lot closely aligned, a lot more closely aligned than it was what, what he was running with Enos or Rick. So um, I really think that he could shine. So if Kosi stays, he's two. Uh, get the ability to maybe redshirt TVD. And then maybe you go Motaka at three or in, in that case. Now, if Nikosi's not here, then maybe you end up having Tate as your backup. Or maybe you go ahead and put in that Swiss Army knife role if he's still here, which I'm assuming he would. If he's got some ties down here, uh, is he willing to part ways? I don't think so. So maybe he still stays down here. And and I said it again: find a find a way, just like they use, you know, just like they use that Swiss Army knife with the New Orleans Saints. Just find find right. a way to just get the ball in his hands. He could still be a playmaker for you. You did that kind of with Florida, and you went away from it. It did you know, get the defense to react a little bit. Maybe you can kind of carve out a little niche and a role for him in that way. He seemed to enjoy it. Uh, so that's it. So it depends on if Nikosi stays or not, but I'll assume that he does. And I'll say it's De'Ara King, Nikosi Perry to Tyler red shirts. And then you get Matoka as your two, three and Tate as your wildcat three. All right, Ro, you were really high on Jaron Williams last year. What do you think it went wrong from him? I mean, we saw, some good Jaron, and we saw some bad Jaron. In your expert opinion, what do you think it went wrong for him? For him? System-wise, and see, that was the thing, because system-wise on what that West Coast, you know, the spread coast derivative, it was it was a lot of West Coast <laughs> tendencies. you got to be a quick decision maker. You're going to work a little bit in the middle of the field. you got to make the decisions. And I really thought that's why I was high on Jaron once he was inserted as a starter to stay in that direction, that he has a little bit quicker release than Nikosi does. Um, I, I felt there was that, and, and obviously he set a record, you know, looked fantastic. You know what? I'm really high on his skill set. He's, he's got, we had Ryan Collins on, you know, reoccurring segment, former Miami hurricane quarterback. And every week it was just like, Jaron's the good, Jaron's the good, Jaron's the good. And this is a guy who played at the university of Miami. Well, and I'm like, I'm seeing it. Uh, you know, Malik Rozier came on with it. Well, oh, I, I haven't seen anybody throw a dig or a post as well as Jaron Williams. I mean, that's straight from his mouth. I mean, just over and over. He, he seemed to put the diligence. But, you know, it's just the one thing that I, I, I just got to caution to anybody just watching or, you know what. It, it, it's like you can see these plays all day, but you know what? You just don't know what's going on once the lights shut off, right? You don't know what's going on in the film room. You don't know how he's garnering the leadership role in the, in the locker room. And for all intents and purposes, you know, that Barry Jackson article in the Miami Herald comes out, it's scathing. It's like, you know, he's, he's missing meetings. He's doing this. He's doing that. You know, uh, Enos came out public and said he's not preparing well. Mm. And, 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 like, those are the things that, like, when you add that, it's like, man, I, I, I can look at you on film all day. I just say, man, you're great. You know, you, 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 you have the skill set. This is, an, this is an elite level throw. This is an elite level decision. That t that day where he broke a Miami Hurricane record, six touchdowns. I mean, it was like a virtuoso performance. 
But when the lights shut off, it, it's equally as important to have that guy, that due diligence, that student, that leader, that role model, that ambassador. I, I think that's the word I'm going to need for my quarterbacks. Do we have that ambassador? Is that the guy that we want representing the whole offense, representing the you, representing the brand? And in that case, when you have an article like that come out, I don't know if he fits that ambassador role, you know? So even though I'm high on his game, I still am. Yeah, he's a, he's a remarkable quarterback, man. He's got a, he's got an excellent skill set, but you just, you gotta, you gotta take it in parts, man. You gotta, you gotta take the whole thing on the field and off of it. Yeah. Just, man, you know, we, like I said, we saw good and we saw bad of Jaren, but um, too much bad. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see, does he stay? Does he go? That's something that, We'll definitely keep an eye on guys. I'm one live with Roman right now from State of the U from the Orange Orange Bowl Boys podcast. 